It's 8.35pm on Tuesday. Yes, it is Tuesday. It's not Wednesday as normal. The 27th of June, 2017, and this is the Cat's Whiskers Podcast live. Hello and welcome to this latest off-season edition of the Cats Whiskers podcast. My name is John O'Bullard. Got a great panel tonight uh, talking about Panthers' latest signings and all the goings-on in the Elite League. So, I'm delighted to welcome, from the hockey writers, Paul Baum. Oh, is that me? Hello. That's you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's also a warm welcome to Antoine Marie-Jean. Good evening. And Andy Haywood. Evening. Right, well, we go, are going to crack straight on. And uh, we, if you would like to contact us throughout the show, you can do via Twitter. It's at Cats Whiskers TV. If you want to comment on anything you hear tonight, we've also got quite a few of your comments that you sent us during the day about Panthers roster and recruitment so far. So if you want to get in touch about that, you can do, as I said, at Cats Whiskers TV on Twitter. But first, we are going to go through chronologically all the player movements since the last podcast, which was on the 24th of May. And we're going to start on the, back on the 30th of May when it was announced that Eric Lindhagen had re-signed with the Panthers. We're still not sure if this will be on D or as a forward, but Andy, I'll start with you. Your, your thoughts on the re-signing of, of Lindhagen? Um, well, I said at the end of last year that he, he was one of them players that if he signed, great. If he didn't, fair enough. Um, you know, we we saw what he was what he was all about last season. And to be brutally honest, he was one of um, you know the, one of the bright sparks from from last season, import wise. So, you know, you know what you get with him. He's going to be ridiculously reliable. He's a fantastic skater. Um, he's versatile. He, he can play forward or defence. Um, you know, and and. I think he's a very good player. I just think that um, there was part of me that just thought with with the CHL we we could perhaps attract a slightly um, higher calibre of player, maybe, um, and wondered whether we'd be uh, re-signing him this season. But but we have done, and I've got no no problems with that whatsoever. And uh, I'll, I'll come to you, D or forward. Where do you think he'll go? Both, because there's guarantee we're going to get injuries. Um, but it's useful to have somebody that can do you know switch. Um, like he can um i think if i'm honest if we at the moment i don't know because um i'm not going to play guessing lines because we've not signed half a team That's Andy. Um, so <laughs> and andy will get really annoyed if you oh i'm gonna go import 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 and then import yeah um yeah, I don't know. It, it, it really depends on on the rest of the uh, the players that are due to come in. Um, I'm, I'm not going to play second guess, but like I say, his versatility is going to be um, key for us. Um, and I can see him playing both D and forward this year. I mean, Paul, your your thoughts on Lindargan? Because I, I think f- uh, as poor as last season was domestically, he was one of the few bright sparks spots in it. Yeah, but that's not really saying a lot, is it? Um, I, I, I'm a bit sort of like Andy, really. It was uh, oh, if he signs, he signs. If he doesn't, he doesn't. Um, I just hope you know Nielsen can. You know, right? You've got the versatility there, uh, which is useful. But I just hope Nielsen sort of can work out what it is he's, he's going to do with him and use him in that role a, a, as much as possible. So you know, he, he knows what he's he's got to do and 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 can can get on with it. Okay, we are going to go on to next the next day, and this is probably the biggest signing we've had so far. On the thirty first of May, it was announced that netminder Michael Garnett had signed for the Panthers. He had twenty four appearances in the NHL for the Atlanta Thrashers, but three hundred and twenty eight appearances in the KHL. He was uh, a cover for SC Burn, one of our opponents in the Champions Hockey League, coming up uh, f- throughout the end of last season, and. Paul, I'll start with you on this one. He comes with a great deal of pedigree and looks the real deal. 
Well, you make you make him sound like a brewery delivery man. <laughs> he comes with a great deal of pedigree. Um, yeah, I mean, he looks the real deal, uh, doesn't he? He's got the experience. He's he's got the numbers, he's, and he's been playing at a level that um, you know you've got you've got to be quality to to play at. And um, as, well, I mean, Coventry will get onto it later, I guess. Late, but you know, Coventry have signed somebody who has got. You know, decent numbers, really decent numbers today. But from what I've seen so far, I think Garnet is probably the uh, the best player that's that's signed into this league. You know, in in any position so far. Yeah, I, Andy yeah. of the of the Sorry. new people coming in. Yeah, I mean, hey, Andy, the, there was a, a bit of uh, how should I say dissent when when it was announced that Mika with Vietman wasn't wasn't coming back, and. Yeah, we signed this guy, and and that dissent seems to have dissipated quite quickly. Yeah, uh, you know, one one thing that I have sort of realised recently is that a lot of people get attached to uh, their favourite players um, emotionally. I mean, you know, that's that's fair enough. Um, but what what you do realise pretty quickly is that you know. The turnaround is is pretty quick in this sport, and you know realistically, you don't forget them, but you you do move on quickly. You know we had the, exactly the same thing when when Kowalski retired, and it was all you know who who in their right mind is going to be good enough to fill that guy's uh, skates, and and you know Wheatman did a, a pretty damn good job at it. Um, so yes, I agree. Obviously, when when Wheatman um, when it was announced he wasn't coming back. There was quite a lot of, um, not necessarily anger, but there was perhaps in some parts, but, um, you know, disappointment in a lot of camps um, because of how good he's been. But, you know, when you sign a player with that kind of quality, that kind of pedigree um, and that kind of CV, you can't help but, but you, you know, sit there in awe. And, and uh, it's not a case of, uh, you know, Mika who, because he, he was, he's been brilliant for us. But it certainly helps to sort of, uh, you know, forget that feeling of disappointment that he's not coming back because it's, it is one hell of a signing. I mean, and it, at 34, he's not the youngest netminder that we've ever had. But we mentioned on the last podcast about Edward Zarkachenko, who, who comes in, he's 21. He's probably going to get a few starts. How do you see this whole netminding lineup now when you include Sam Gospel as well as the British backup? Um, I know um, we're still a, a while away from the season, and obviously, plenty of teams have got to sign their, their players still. But for me, I don't think we'll see a better goalkeeping or goaltending um, combination than what we've got. Um, it's a Garnet himself, just it looks like a stud. Um, a proper stud. Um, yes, he's coming to the end of his career, but it, would you sign somebody with with this sort of resume in his sort of late twenties? Um, I'd probably probably not at this stage with the elite leagues at. Um, but then I, I quite like the look of Zakajenko myself. I, th- I, I think he's going to be a bit of a jewel, um, and I can actually see him pushing Garnet for the uh, for the number one. Um, I just hope that. You know, we don't leave gospel in that sort of position that uh, poor old Greener was left in at the playoffs last year. Um, and it'd be nice if we could get gospel, you know, some ice time um, in the well, whatever the EPL was now, in the NIHL now, isn't it? Um, somewhere, you know, even even if it's you know a couple of games a month or something, just to keep it keep him fresh. Well, of course, the Lions are, are in the top part of the NIHL as well gospel knows the lions well he's played there before but yeah I, I i to be honest though i can see it will be one important gospel as the backup on game night yeah i think that's well we all hope that's what's the case because the only way you'd go with two import goal is is either in the chl when there's no limit or when you you where you've got you've got so many injuries that you can't field a full outfield um so let's fingers crossed. We, you know, we'll know we'll come on to it later. We, you know, the new guys do their job and keep the vast majority of the injuries away this season. And of course, um, Garnet also signing on a two-year university deal uh, at Loughborough University. So he will be here for two seasons, of course. 
On the 6th of June, it was announced that Alexander Mokshantev has signed. He played last season for Zizel Penza in the VHL and Larda Togilati in the KHL. So another player coming with KHL experience. He's only 22. Uh, described as a very quick forward, but already confirmed by Corey Nielsen that he will be playing on the fourth line with Robert Lakovic and Oli Betteridge. I mean, Andy, surely that bodes well when you're signing someone who played in the KHL last season to go on your fourth line. Well, it depends where you read, but but yes, it does, in my opinion. Um, you, you know, I, I think it's a it's a really good strategy. I think it's I think it's bold um and I, but i do think that our, our sort of standing in the chl is the reason why we can perhaps um do something like this and you know i i think i think having a player with that kind of experience um regardless of you know supposed star quality um can only be a good thing you know they don't play they don't play in those leagues if you know they don't have something um you know, and we've been, we've discussed. Um, it's why it's been discussed that he's supposed to be incredibly quick and pretty skillful, um, and that the idea is that he starts on that fourth line with the you know with the with the sort of proviso that if he performs well, he will be moving up you know up off that fourth fourth line. But I certainly think that he's he could be a, a real good find. Um, you know, I don't want to. You know, say that he's going to be a world beater because you know we we have a habit as a team, um, not necessarily the fans, but as, as a team in general of you know sort of overhyping certain aspects. Uh, but I'm looking forward to seeing him play, and I do think that it could be a really good fit for um, the two Brits that he's been stated to be playing with. Yeah, and um, Paul, uh, we had. Well, there was some sort of concern, shall we say, when when he signed about his lack of point scoring. But he's been playing certainly at a much higher level in the KHL, where he's I think he's got two assists from thirty eight games, so not a great deal of points. But in the VHL last season, seventeen points from twenty six games in in a league that is known for being very defensive. So are people really worrying over nothing? Um, I don't much about worrying over nothing because I think it's it might possibly be more of a case of people don't necessarily know about. You know, we, we had this conversation before about European leagues, the, the, the almost the dismissal of, of them. But I, you know, I, I'm 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 just prevaricating here because I'm trying to find something. You, um, but talking about because the last player we signed from the uh, VHL was Logan McMillan, a man remember who was drafted above PK Subban and a number of others. Um, but um, and if this computer sped up a bit, I'd be all right. But you know, he's, he's young. He's young, and you know he didn't get a huge number of points in the KHL, but. It's the KHL. Somebody obviously thought he was good enough to play in the KHL. You know, regardless of of, of how long. You know, if if they didn't think he was anywhere near good enough, he wouldn't have got there. So, you know, maybe people are you know worrying a bit. But you know, by the same token, we we know we, we're going we're going to find out. So, how many points did you say he got? Uh, last season he got two, he's got two points in thirty eight KHL games, but yeah, in, in overall in the VHL sixty four games, sixteen goals, fifteen assists for thirty one points, yeah. uh, a standard which is arguably higher than the elite league. Right in sixty nine eighty three games um, across two seasons, Logan McMillan got twenty six points. In the VHL, right. So, so make of that what you will. Yep. Yeah, so there, there's your, there's your comparison. 
Okay, the next signing, Tim Billingsley, uh, was the first new import D signing. He signed on the 8th of June. The 27-year-old has 113 games as a pro in the ECHL after a long college career. He signs from Brampton Beast on the recommendation of David Ling. Um, Ant, what do you know of Tim Billingsley? Um, nothing till I've seen him play, to be honest. Um, I'm I'm not as well versed as you lot as uh, with, with regards to all the different leagues and everything. I'd, um, <laughs> I've not really got a lot to say, but uh, that, that awful player that we had, David Ling, who was you know a complete and utter um, disappointment when he when he joined us. Um, he, he doesn't often get things wrong, does he? I mean, we've, we've not done too bad on his recommendations before. We certainly haven't. Eh? Andy, a, a seventh round uh, pick by the Arizona Coyotes in 2008, 189th overall in the NHL. Last season, six goals and 21 assists in 60 games. So getting on for half a point a game in uh, in his ECHL season last season. He sounds like the guy who may quarterback a, a power play or, or certainly be pushing forward from, D. Uh, yeah, I would imagine so. He, he certainly, you know, from the sort of bits bits that we've been fed, um, he certainly sounds like he's a, a, a puck-moving defenseman, I believe they call them these days. Um, and, you know, he looks, he does look the part. He, he looks like he, he, he could be uh, a real sort of uh, st- standout for me on, on defence. Uh, you know, admittedly, we've got perhaps a couple more to sign, I think. Um, so, you know, there's plenty more chances that we could get someone that's, you know, even better. But he does, he does to me, look like he could be a, a real sort of, a real good find. Um you know, he looks like he's pretty steady, um, which ultimately, in, in my opinion, is something that that is highly sought after for me in a defenceman. Um, you yeah, know, was last some, season. Well, you know, <laughs> someone who who might not necessarily be, you know, flashy, but he'll he'll get a job done. Um, you know, and obviously that video has doing been doing the rounds a lot. Uh, and you know, it certainly seems that you know, in, in some certain certain there, yeah, some circumstances, he can uh, throw a decent hit. Mm. I mean, Paul uh, Jeff Brown, of course, will be back with us next season. He was delighted that Billingsley was coming into the squad. He played with him two seasons ago in Brampton. Uh, quoted as saying, he's a good guy around the room. He'll buy into the coach's philosophy. He's going to be really effective for us this year. And I suppose for, for us fans who don't know a lot about the new imports who, who are coming in, we've obviously not, not seen them. Um, it's good to hear recommendations from players who are already in the squad. It is. And, you know, you, you would think that you know, Corey Nielsen's spoken to him as well, but you've also got to remember he was probably quite glad that Matt Carter had signed. Um, last season, not this season. Don't worry, people. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it. I, th- I think it's interesting. What I th- I think he's going to be the new Guy Lapine, in as much as he doesn't look, it doesn't necessarily look as though he's the, he's the full package yet. But under Nielsen, I think he's going to grow into being you know, a more rounded defenseman. And, and I, I think he could definitely be one to watch. OK. I could also be completely wrong. <laughs> well, we, 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 we'll see in about 10 months' yeah. time. Yeah, no, no, nobody remember this. Nobody's recording. Nobody's listening to this. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and then on the 9th of June, it was announced, uh, as, as expected, that Brian McGratton would not be returning to the Panthers for his second year of his contract as he announced his retirement. Uh, now, do we think that is a blow or a blessing? Paul, I'll come back to you first because you, your first hockey writer's article was on Brian McGratton's decision to leave the Panthers. So, for you, blow or a blessing? Um, I don't necessarily think it's a, a, a blow. Um... But I'm not entirely sure that it's entirely a blessing either. Um, I remember thinking, you know, at the time when I was writing that article about the fact that 
I was more excited the, that we'd signed McGrattan than I was when we signed Cam Jansen, despite the fact that I can remember exactly where I was when Cam Jansen signed and when Cam Jansen left, going on holiday on both occasions. Um, but I was also more disappointed when Jansen announced he wasn't coming back than when McGrattan did. And I think that sort of sums up the whole thing around McGrattan for me, that... It, it, yeah, he was great at times, but those times there weren't enough of those times. Yeah, Andy, same question. Um, you know, I'm, I make no bones about the fact that I really like McGrattan, um, and I, I personally um, will miss the fact that he played for Panthers. That he plays for Panthers. Obviously, we may want to say the fact that he played for Panthers. Um, so. You know, with that, I would have liked to have seen him come back for his second year. But by the same token, you know, like I explained with um, with the net mining situation with with Wheatman, you know, I, you know, give it well, best part of five months time from now, and and most of last season's team will be forgotten about. You know, is in the same way that you know teams in the past have all been forgotten about. There's very few players that sort of really stick with you and, and have that sort of longevity um, because of their legacy. And, you know, as much as you might have your favourite players, you know, and I liked him, Brian McGrattan isn't one of them players. So, you know, y- yes, it would have been nice if he'd have come back, in, in my opinion. Um, but he's chose to retire and you can't fault that. He's had one hell of a career. Um, and, you know, we'll sign... 20 players this season and, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, 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 there's not a lot more to be said, to be honest. He was, uh, I've been privileged to witness one of my all-time favourite players, being a big Flames fan myself, seeing Brian McGlatton, Bri- Bri- I can't even say his name right, um, Brian McGlatton, play for your local team, the team that you watch week in, week out. It was it was surreal when it happened. It was a fantastic moment. Um, I was lucky enough to meet him on a couple of occasions, top bloke. Um, and I think he surprised people in his, his output because, you know, obviously we all remember, obviously, that goal against Sheffield, which in the grand scheme of things didn't count for much, but it's still one of the highlights of, a, of, of the season. Um, that fight with Nielsen... You know, it would be right up there um, for entertainment values, um, and I just think the whole his overall presence on the ice it was like <laughs> all all it took really was a little stare or something like that, and and you know it, it's it do enough to quieten quite an opposition up. And let's put, put it this way: Fitzgerald was in his pocket for the entire season. Well, that's the reason um, Fitzgerald added a, <laughs> a world hide and seek championship medal to his playoff one, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. So, um, I mean, he's had a fantastic career, uh, played so long at, at the top. Um, you know, I hope he enjoyed his time over here. Um, I certainly enjoyed seeing him as a Panther. Um, yes, I'll miss him, but like Andy says, you move on. You have to move on. Um, as much as I still reminisce about the Jordan Foxes. Um, Guy Lapine, we've already mentioned. You know, you you have to move on. You have to then bring your support for the new the new crop of players, and let's just see who steps up um, this time. I just I just hope we don't go for the whole team toughness route again, because uh, that invariably doesn't work from what we've seen in the past. Yeah, in, ter- in terms of play, you know, moving on. You know, the, both both the guys are entirely right. I mean, I couldn't remember Mike Berube the day after we he left. <laughs> I still can't remember anything about it now, and I've spent the last three minutes trying to think of something. <laughs> but yeah, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it, it's a team we follow rather than an individual. So, you know, it it, it, it happens. And thirteenth of June was the next new signing, a uh, new import forward, Raphael Bouzier. I hope I've said that right. Signed yep. from Olympia Ljubljana in the EBEL. 
23 years old. He was a second round draft pick of the Minnesota Wild in 2012, 43rd overall. Paul, I'll come to you on this one because I think you said something very, very interesting about him when he when he signed. Because there was a lo- again a lot of discord almost amongst the fan base that oh he's not good enough, he doesn't score enough points. But I think I remember seeing something where you put a stat about his output last season. Did I? Yeah, something about he scored a third of their points or was involved. Oh, in yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he sc- yes, he scored a lot of goals, a, lot, a fair number of, of points on a pretty poor team. I mean, we think we had problems last year. From what I could find out, they... They finished um, second from bottom in, in their second league. From bottom. So, yeah. the t- so the team below them must have been really bad. Um, but, you know, there was apparently a lot of discourse in the dressing room Um which he wasn't necessarily part of. Yeah, I mean, they only uh, scored 106 goals last yeah. season. And, if yeah, you, and he, got, he, he got 30-something points. He got 34 points, so he, uh, he was involved uh, uh, in a third of their entire goals mm. output for the season, which bodes well for me. Yeah. Um, I just hope he doesn't need to do it again this season. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, and the other the other part of that stat was that whilst he was, I mean, he was he top scored in terms of points. I don't think he was top goal scorer, but he top scored in terms of points. He was also second in the number of penalty minutes. So, um, yeah, but he, bit of an all rounder. Si- yeah, but sixty two penalty minutes in forty eight games is not yeah. a massive amount. To be, it's fair. not a massive amount, but this is, I mean, he's he was still doing more than anybody else. Well, <laughs> it, it certainly sounds that way. Uh, Andy, uh, Buzier, what, what's what's your impressions? Again, you know, it's, it's very limited um, sort of information that we've had on him, but he looks, you know, he looks like he could be pre- pretty decent. Um, I, I want to just double check this and make sure that I've got the right one, but he's he's the, the one that's sort of been touted as being a bit of a power forward, am I right? That's mm. correct, yeah. So you know he's he's always going to take penalty minutes in in that role, um, but you know we've we've not we've probably not really had um, you know obviously we sp- spoke about McGrattan earlier on, um, but we've probably not really had like a a really effective power forward for for some years now probably, um, so it will be it will be interesting to see uh, to see how he how he how he does play. Uh, and and see sort of how he fits in, and it I, it will be interesting um, when everybody's signed um, to see what Corey's sort of plan with him is, as as to where he, he sort of sees him fitting into the team. Whether he's going to be looking at sticking him on one of the sort of top scoring lines uh, in a bid to create some space for somebody else, perhaps, or or even to try and uh, get a lot more output out of out of him himself. Um, or whether you know we'll we'll use him in a more sort of um, checking role, um, you know, like we've seen in the past with with you know some of the effective uh, lines that that Farmer's been on over the past couple of years. Um, so you know, it, 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 you know, like I say, very li- limited into you know what information we've got on this guy. Um, but you know, I'm certainly not unimpressed. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, time time will tell. And we we don't really have too much longer to wait in in uh, in, in in a lot of aspects. Mm. And the final new face since our last po- podcast uh, announced on the nineteenth of June with. with- uh, quite a little, little not uh, much of a fanfare, it has to be said. Uh, Nottingham youngster Joseph ha- uh, Hazeldine, 16 years old, iced for the Nottingham Lions and the Deeside Dragons in the NIHL last season. A player I've seen a lot of over, well, since the end of the season in various tournaments that I've been at and, and involved in broadcasting. V- very, very good player. Very, very good defenseman. Responsible at the back. Got a wicked shot on him. Clearly not the finished article, but I'm really excited to see what Corey can do with him, to be honest. Um, and good that we're getting these youngsters in. Yeah, um, I did ask the question at the Neil Black Q&A after, you know, we, we, we historically Panthers have always had um, a youngster or two that they've blooded. Um, in in certain games and what have you, they've had him in the in the squad and training regularly, and that seemed to have dropped off over the last couple of seasons. So it's really good to see that that 
you know they've taken that up again and you know they realize that you know the david clarks uh, of this world and you know they can't go on forever um and i'll i bow down to your vastly superior knowledge on on hazel dine um, obviously because i've never seen him play myself so hey right. right. paul we've been privileged enough to see a lot of youngsters come through the junior system and play for the panthers in our in our time watching them you know it seems as if with this under 23 rule we could start to see that happening again well we're going to have to aren't we um the the thing with that, that rule is and you know don't get me wrong it's it's a very very good idea this is the sort of thing that should have been happening years ago and not just in, in, at the panthers either you know across the ver- well, across all the teams in the in the countries that you know you, we've got to keep bringing this talent through because the people we've got now who are under 23 two three years down the line they're not they you know we all get older at the same rate um so we you know, we've got to keep bringing things through, and you know, we, basically we've got to tie these up almost you know almost like apprentices for want of a better way. You know, give them time, get, let them train with us, but they've got to have playing time as well. So, and if that means that they are then, um, I want to say farmed out, but that's really not the the, the right you know loaned to 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 clubs below us then to, to get the ice time to get the you know to get that game practice then that that can only only be a good thing okay uh, some players who have left the club or announced their retirement uh, since our last podcast Jeff War, Brad Moran and Jason Williams have all announced their retirements recently uh, Andy any surprise with any of those do you think um, no not really um, I know Corey had said that he was hopeful of, of trying to um, entice Williams to stay on. Um, but I think it, the way the article read, and it was a while ago, it, it was sort of more hopeful um, than sort of uh, factual. Um, you know, I think it was pretty common knowledge that Brad Moran was retiring at the end of the season. War was perhaps a bit of a surprise, but... Um, I don't think it was a surprise that he wasn't coming back, um, but you know perhaps the retirement was was a bit of a shock, I suppose. Um, but you know, all in all, I, I suppose you know you thank them for, for their time and, and their, you know what they did and, and good good luck in the future and all, all that. And you know, like as like we said before, with with all the other stuff, you you, you move on. And, you know, one thing it does mean is that we'll we'll see um, a new. Um, I can't think of a word. Obviously, we'll see a new captain, but obviously, war was a, was an alternative as well. So you see a new leadership team next season um, with with a few players. Like I say, because obviously we've 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 gone from uh, having a, a captain in, in Moran and an alternative in in uh, in war, and obviously uh, both of them aren't coming back. So there'll be uh, new faces with letters on the shirts next year, and that's uh, always open for debate yeah. okay and then a final uh, sign well I would say a player signing but someone new newish to the team anyway or to the squad uh, it was announced today that Pete Edwards would be the new strength and conditioning coach for the Panthers for me probably one of the most important signings of the off season because We've cried out for a strength and conditioning coach, and now we seem to have one. So, just very quickly, uh, how important do you, do you think this is? Uh, Ant, we'll start with you. I think I think it's hugely important in the modern game now. Uh, maybe five years ago, it wouldn't have been um, as important. But as the, you know, the elite league pushes to improve itself, you see more and more of this sort of thing happening. Um, you know, I, I I think it's good as well that it's not just him. I think it, obviously he's going to be working closely with the the uh, the new physio team, and obviously the Panthers talked about the the deal that they've got with Rocco as well. So uh, it, that from a, a back office um, side of things, from the you know support side of things, that's really really promising, um, and I, I hope it pays dividends because um, it's certainly one of the areas that we pointed as a, as a, a weakness over the last couple of years with the amount of injuries we've had. Yeah, I mean, one of the things, and and 
I was thinking back to the Q and A with Neil Black, uh, and one of the things he said he was going to get a strength and conditioning coach. That's now been delivered. He said there was going to be um, a lot of younger players without histories of injury. So far, that has been delivered. The only thing, is, and one of the crucial things that he said at that Q and A, was that the team would be in for the seventh of August. There's still eight imports to sign. So, very quickly, I'm going to go go through you all. Paul, I'll start with you. Do you think we will have, have everyone in for the 7th of August? No. Um, I would hope that they're all here by the end of that week. But I, I think with each passing day, the livelihood um, decreases. But at the same token, we don't know what's in the pipeline. We're recording this on a, on a Tuesday night, and because what well, in fact because we just we just the very fact that we're recording means something will happen tomorrow. <laughs> That's what always happens. So you know we we could wake up tomorrow morning to monumental signing news. All the rest of the players are being announced tomorrow. You know, you, a bit like the way Fife do it. <laughs> you know, oh yeah, all these players are coming. Yeah, they're coming back next year. Yeah. Um, so. Whilst I, don't, whilst I think it's, it's looking increasingly unlikely, we just don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Okay. Andy? Um, I don't think they'll be in for that, that, that week, that first week of training camp, but I do think that bar potentially one, maybe, one or two, um, I'm sort of sitting on the fence a little bit here. But bar one or two, I think they'll all be here for the preseason games. Okay. Uh, I think I, I don't think I don't think we'll have them, but I think we'll be pretty close. Okay. And um, I, I likewise, um, I can't see it happening. Never happens. Um, I just really, really hope that they're all in for at very least the 19th against the uh, DEL team, Is it Crefield. Crefield Penguins. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Because that's the only preseason friendly I'm going to. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Some of the comments that we've had from you uh, during the day. Many thanks for getting in touch with us. We asked what you thought of the roster and recruitment for the Panthers so far, and we got an excellent response. So, uh, a few of the comments that we received uh, from Jake Leversuch. He says, slow and unconvincing, unfortunately. Bar Garnet. I get taking on younger guys, but how many can we take who might be good in the future? Um, Ant, fair comment? Um, yeah, uh, well, I suppose it is because that, we've already alluded to it. We we don't actually know a lot about the about the players that were signed. We've not got anybody that's you know watches all the other leagues around the world religiously to be able to fi- uh, to report back and say this guy's fantastic or this this guy's a, a crock of uh, yeah, but, sugar. But isn't that normal? Yeah, exactly. Um, you, you you don't know, is it? You still, we, um, I look. I mean, you always look back, and they're the, probably the two most recent examples of players that have come in, and people have looked at the stats and, and been very underwhelmed. Matt Francis and um, Evan Mosey. And am I right in thinking they've probably are two of our better players over the last few years? Yes, I would say so. Um, I, I really don't know. It's, it's like you say, until you've seen them play, how can you make that decision? Unless we sign a team, uh, like the last, the last seven, eight players uh, are all ex-NHLers, you know, we're talking 28, 29-year-old NHLers that were playing first line, second line um, last year. I don't think people are going to be happy, but we're the elite league. We're not, we're, not, we're not going to attract those sorts of players unless we spend a ridiculous amounts of money um, and on getting them in or the NHL collapses. Okay. From Ryan Atwood, he says, Corey's saying the right things and I'm a fan of young hungry talent over ex-NHL players coming for pre-retirement paychecks. And Andy, are you a fan of young and hungry over ex-NHL? Um, uh, no, but I do think there's got to be a balance. Um, you know, I, I just think that these players that are ex-NHL that are coming here for their retirement paycheck they you know they might be slower they might you know some of them might be not very good you know um but on the whole they all have that little bit of class that 
you don't get from someone with you know uh, raw grits or you know the un- unfinished, unpolished sort of player. Um, and you need those players. You you can't you can't do you know you can't hope to win things or or do things without class and and skill and you know just pure experienced hockey knowledge um and you know you don't get that without having some older wiser heads you know and yes there are some that that don't work but i think on the whole you know realistically if you look at the you know the the players that, that we've signed that sort of fit that criteria you know the in my opinion, the vast majority of them do work. Um, you know, and he's been mentioned a little bit on various social media, but, you know, someone like David Ling, if you have the opportunity to sign a player of David Ling's caliber, um, you know, that kind of CV, if he's fit, what, what difference does it make if he's, if he's old? If you can fit him into a team... And, and give him a role in that team that's going to suit him. I'd still take Linger back, you know, tomorrow because he he was just different class, and and we don't see that too often um, in in this league, you know. So for me personally, I would always be um, favouring the sort of older, wiser, um, you know been there done that bit of bit of class bit of skill but you know uh, bit of knowledge rather than just a team full of you know 25 year olds who you know haven't necessarily reached the heights that they should have because i mean you know and we're getting there as a league but as as has been mentioned i think and mentioned it earlier on you're not going to sign a, a player with you know, a CV of Michael Garnett or David Ling, you know, when they're 27, because they'll still be in the top leagues if they were that good. Um, and that's something that we, we, we kind of, as, as fans of this, of, of the Panthers and of, and of this league, we kind of forget at, at times, I think a little bit, you know, everyone, everyone's guilty of it. It's, you know, because we want the best players. We want to see the best players and we want our team to be better than everybody else. But at times you you have to sort of sit back and, and look at the realism a little bit and think you know what some sometimes we're not going to sign that kind of player because he's still he's still got ambitions he's still got he's still got you know contracts in top leagues you know you look at players like Mosey and Lapine you know they get mentioned all the time about oh we need them let's, let's come back and all that sort of stuff move on they're better than us quite frankly and. You know, it might it might suck to say it, but Guilapine and Evan Mosey are better than the Nottingham Panthers at, the, at, this, at this stage of their career, and it, and the proof's in the pudding. You know, um, so that's why, in my opinion, um, I'd rather have the sort of the older heads. Ultimately, if they're good enough and they want to come here, I don't care how old they are or where they've been. But I just think that for me personally, I, I like to see the the sort of the players that look different class. Okay. Uh, interesting comment from Andrew Turner. He says a t- team built around netminders. Corey always does. If netminding fails, then the team will collapse. What do you make of that, Paul? Well, it's not just us that build teams around netminders. Any, any number of people, you know, do it. And, well, th- th- I think the main argument I've got against that is last season. Um, yeah, Mika Wheatman didn't have the greatest of, of of seasons. He had problems with injuries and that. But would I necessarily, necessarily say that he collapsed um, or, or, you know, or he failed? Then, no, I don't, I don't think I would. But the, the team did still sort of at times collapse around him. Um, at the end of the day you, as a netminder there's always going to be a certain amount of extra scrutiny on you, you, you um, one slip you can give up a goal it's it's very difficult to say that about any other 
position. So I think I'm not I'm not sure where he's sort of really going with that because you know you most teams are built around a gut, an netminder. Okay, uh, Tom Spence says no issue with those signs, but still don't have enough. Still need top six forwards two D. Uh, Chris Matthews looks a solid set of roll skaters so far. Just need the standout players to compensate a great looking net minding squad. Uh, David Kemp, like every team before them, look good on paper. Let's see how they gel. The same as that every single season, of course. Uh, Sam Balm, he says, unspectacular so far, bar Garnet. Lacking promise skill. Slow pace considering all due to be for 7th of August. Strength and conditioning coach is the best signing so far. Uh, David England, he says, to be honest, if this is the quality we are getting, then not good enough. But in theory, we have the eight best players left to sign. So wait and see signings. Just on that, guys, you know, we've got eight players to sign. Do you expect these eight players to be the sort of in the top two forward lines and the top defensive line? Yes. Okay. Paul? I I think so. Looking at um, what, what we've signed, then yes. Um, you know, he, he's talked about Mark, uh, Mark Chanchev um, being on the fourth line that, that may move up. I, I just... I didn't put that down to him improving. I put that down to the usual number of um, injuries. Um, but yeah, I think there, there's no. I think those top two lines. You need the quality. Um, you need that something extra, and I, I don't see that in any in the players so far. Okay, Andy. Uh, yeah, I certainly. You know, I, I I'm not convinced that perhaps it would be. You know, eight players left to sign. It's the top two defensemen and the top six forwards. But I certainly think that a, a fair percentage of those players that we've got left to sign are going to be the um, money makers, shall we say? But you know, the point scorers and the, the stellar defensemen. Um, you know, I, I thoroughly expect that we'll see. You know, a player that on paper looks like he's going to get a bag full of assists and hopefully a player because we've not had one for a couple of seasons now that looks like he's going to score 40 goals a season so uh, yeah I, I certainly think that you know maybe not all eight of the players are going to be you know the, the top notch ones but I certainly think a, a, a fair percentage and a, and a high percentage of that of that figure will be um, the sort of our new um, you know top forwards and, and hopefully a, a you know, couple of really good defensemen okay. uh, Lee Constable he says promising start to our recruitment the Brit pack sorted with three youthful Brit additions who hopefully will progress at the Panthers and hopefully be good for the future giving our current Brit pack some competition the goalie situation is looking very good two great sounding netties with gospel and much more reliable backup I'm happy we've only kept a handful of last season imports as well the new imports so far also sound decent I hope we can build on this and produce a much more reliable defence and add some good skillful goal scoring forwards to put up a good amount of points I also hope we can add an enforcer as well well I still think we need one in this league very quickly guys what do you think to that last comment do we still need an enforcer Paul you need um, you need some sort of option. I think whether it's an out-and-out enforcer or it's somebody who can play that role uh, along with uh, with other ones at the, at the same time. I don't know whether you know did did we need sort of a, the nuclear weapon like you know McGratton was. I'm not sure anymore. You know, what great it was to, you know to to have him, but I think you you definitely need something. Andy, um, yeah, like Paul, I don't think I don't think we need a sort of a, an out and out, um, you know, someone like a, a Matt Nickerson, perhaps. But I do think we need someone, um, you know, that's that's willing to go, isn't isn't afraid of going, and and hopefully someone that's scary as hell. Um, you know, I don't think we've had. <sighs> You know, we, I mean, we've had players like McGratton who, you know, have a resume that makes them intimidating. We've had players like 
um, Penner, um, who you didn't know what they were going to do on a night, um, and, and that made them intimidating. We've had, you know, players like Guilapine who, you know, realistically didn't lose many fights, um, but also could catch you uh, with a big shoulder. Um, but I still, personally, I, I don't think we've seen a player as scary uh, in in our team since Mike Rees. And I would I would love to see a player like that, someone who, on on a on a given night, <laughs> might just want to go out and hurt somebody. <laughs> um, you know, not not in a sort of goony, sort of malicious, cheap shotting way, but he was always going to be extra physical. And he would not let anyone near the netminder, um, you know. And I just think I'd, the sort of players in, that I've seen that sort of fit that mould would be Mike Rees or, or Paul Farone um, when he was at Newcastle, um, Brian Thompson. You know, they were genuinely intimidating players. They weren't necessarily the biggest players. They weren't necessarily the players that had the most fights in a season, but people knew what to expect from them and, and they respected um, you know the fact that they were going to do their job and they were going to do it exactly on their terms um, so someone like that in that kind of mould um, for me would be absolutely lovely but unfortunately I get the impression that they just don't make them like that anymore and um- I don't think I can add anything more to it that Andy's not already said, to be fair, and Paul. Um, the one thing I'd add is I'd like us to see um, maybe not just a one-out and out uh, enforcer, if you like, but say somebody can play D, um, that not afraid of um, getting dirty as well, like a, like a Bennett, um, someone like that as well. Uh, but yeah, I think Andy's pretty much said it perfectly. We all, we all long for those days, I think. <laughs> A uh, few more. What are some from the cage? Kiev the Great, he says, the players we've got this far look okay for the most part. Goaltending looks exceptional. Uh, and a big upgrade on our British bench goalie. Only niggly concern is that we, we haven't, I hope, signed our top lines yet. And so the next signings could make or break this roster. Uh, Dill1015 says, players that we have look good for the roles they've been signed for, but we need raw raw quality now. It's been a while since we had any news and the silence from the club is deafening. Uh, W Gray, he says, our goaltending team is the best in the league. We have a good core of bottom six forwards and the beginnings of a balanced defence. The remaining signings need to be highly skilled franchise players if we are to compete this season. No unknown players. I believe so far we have a team that will be physically tough to beat and could make the NIC a tough place to come. I'm excited to watch Bouziers and Mokshantev play. I think they will surprise a lot of people. Okay, final couple of comments now. This one by Joe Barm, your youngest son, of course, Paul, which could, which could have been written by me. It is, is exactly how I feel at this point in time. Happy He's with not going to like that one, I tell you. <laughs> happy with how the <laughs> recruitment has gone so far, especially with our goalies and with the potential of our younger players. I'm slightly worried about how many players we have left to sign, especially as we have been told that our whole team has to be here in time for training camp, and I would think the majority of our unsigned players will need visas, which will vary in time to get. Great that we've got a strength and conditioning coach, but comments made by the club about only working with a few individuals is probably the reason behind why we've had so many injuries over the past couple of seasons. So, yeah, I, 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 basically I could have written that myself. And finally, uh, Jerome Lucy with, with a question. He says, what type of hockey do we think they will play from the players signed so far? This doesn't look like a nor- normal Corey team to me. So, uh, Andy, start with you. Um, I, I, I don't know about that, to be honest. Um, because it's sort of... To me, it's going back to that... It looks like it could be going back to that sort of balanced lines and, and, and getting production from all areas. You know, if it, a lot of people seem to be of the same opinion of... Um, you know, the, um, um, I apologise because I can't remember his name, so I'm going to have to 
But Mark Shantev, a lot of people seem to be the same opinion of him, but he could be a real gem of a signing. And a lot of people are also, like myself included, are hopeful that he's going to fit in really well with, with Lacko and Betteridge because of his speed um, and, and you know, his, his skill set. So, to me, it's almost, you know, and I, I don't particularly like using the phrase, but to me, it, it's, it almost looks like there's a chance he could go back to that whole sort of sexy Nielsen hockey. Um, you know, with, with, it might not, it might not be good in the long run, perhaps, but that whole adage of, you know, yeah, you might score some goals against us, but we've got such attacking prowess, hopefully, um, that, you know, we're going to back ourselves to score more because I think, you know, I think we're all pretty safe in the knowledge that our franchise players are still to come. You know, yes, like I said earlier, it might not be all eight of the players are going to be franchise players, but I'd certainly like to think that a good five or six of them will be. Um, you know, and and I just think that it it, it feels different to the last couple of seasons. Because there's already talk of fourth lines. There's already talk of that depth. And I know that we're going to have to have it because of the CHL. But in the in the long run, in the league, it's, it's only a good thing. And, you know, I just think that perhaps it's going back to a slightly, um, maybe slightly more traditional Nielsen side, uh, you know, type of team in that sense, that it's going to be, Hopefully, it's going to be sort of attractive uh, and attacking hockey. Um, but you know, ultimately, we'll have to we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Paul, um, I don't know. I mean, I think there's speed there. Um, I mean, the only line we really know. I mean, I'm sure Andy's got the other one sorted out in his head already. Um, <laughs> the only line we we really know about is the is that fourth line and and you know there's been a lot of talk about Mark Chantchev and um, if nothing else he's an upgrade on Sakarnis you know if, if you look at that sort of fourth line player that we brought in at the you know the sort of late last season he's definitely a, a step up from that so um, if nothing else then you know he's better that that's better. Um. Uh, yeah, I can't add too much more. To be fair, um, I'd love for us to be a physically imposing team that plays with speed. Um, basically, like you know, the teams you put together on NHL um, EA sports game. Um, but we'll we'll see. I mean, the, the hockey of the last year wasn't great. Um, so something better than that would be a start. Um, I think we've got pace, like Paul's alluded to. Um, I'm quite excited by the Bussier signing. If we've got a decent power forward there, um, you know that he could be an absolute gem for us. Uh, but yeah, it all it all lasts on these last uh, few signings that we've got to make to see the, the, the sort of the outlook of the team for me. Okay, uh, so we'll leave the Panthers there, and thank you very, very much for sending your comments in to us throughout today. And uh, uh, we got to read them all out, so thank you very much indeed. I'm going to finish off by looking at some of the other big news that's been happening in the Elite League uh, since our last podcast a month ago. And we mentioned on the last podcast it broke while we was on air that the Manchester Storm had completed their takeover, and Gordon Gregg, a Glaswegian businessman. Uh, was taking over the running of the Storm. A few days later, he appointed Ryan Finnerty as the new head coach of the Manchester Storm. So, uh, Paul, what, what do you make of Finnerty going to Manchester? Because it's, I suppose it's not going to be the pressure cooker that he's been in with his last two jobs at Sheffield and Brayhead. No, I mean, there's, there's less um, expectation, I guess, uh, of him in, in Manchester, I mean, in Sheffield, obviously, there's all the expectation from their fans there. And then when he was at Brayhead, of people just thought they were going to win the league every year because of the way the um, the league was was set up. So it'll be a, a 
a change change format. It'll be interesting to see what sort of team he builds in there. I mean, Manchester is you know so so it's a tight rink. Um, the fans are literally almost right on top of you, and it, it, so it'll be interesting to see what sort of what sort of team is there. I mean, the, the way it's looking is he's essentially building the Brayhead clan. Mm. He seems to be taking plenty of players um, with with him, but. Interesting times, I think. Yeah, I mean, and Finity knows the big blue tent from when he played with the Cardiff Devils. Altrincham is pretty much a carbon copy of the big blue tent. That's going to become quite an intimidating place to play, I think, with Finity as head coach. If certainly if he builds the team in his own sort of image, if you like, um, I, I think. Manchester could be in for a fun ride this year um, and I think they can uh, surprise a few people to be fair I mean Brayhead the flatter to deceive almost um, of, of the last couple of seasons but certainly the, I think I know he's turning him this, I've seen things like Clanchester Storm and Manchester <laughs> Clan and stuff like that um, you know very good but uh, yeah I, I think um, I mean, I like Finity anyway. Um, I'd have loved to have him, for him to have played for us. Um, yeah, absolute little git uh, <laughs> on the ice, if you like. Um, the, the, the sort of player you love to, you, you'd love to have on your team, but you hate them when they come and play against you. Um, and if he builds a team like that, like I say, I think they're going to wind a lot of people up um, this year. Um, I, I just hope we get to see another Finity bench meltdown because they're always fun to watch. Uh, moving on to the next one, another head coach appointment. John Tripp has been appointed the head coach of the Brayhead clan, having previously been head coach of DEL2 club Ice Paraton Krimeshu. I hope I've said that right. Uh, but they finished bottom of the DEL2 in their regular season. He was only appointed coach of those on the 27th of December in 2016. Uh, and now moves to the Brayhead clan. So, Andy, that quite a surprising appointment, don't you think? I was expecting someone who, who probably had a bit more coaching experience to take over in Glasgow. Yeah, well, maybe not a coaching experience. I was, I, I was, I actually thought it'd be someone that the league knew. I, I didn't think it was going to be like a, a new person to the league. Um, I kind of, I wouldn't have been surprised if it was, um, you know, someone that's played for Brad, um, that was of a stage in my career where they were perhaps looking at making that step to going behind the bench. I I, I, I kind of thought that that might be the route they'd go down. Um, but it, it, it did seem to sort of come, you know, completely out of the blue to just randomly... It was almost... It, I mean, literally, to me, it, it literally did, did see like a, a random selection. It was, you know, it's someone that no one had particularly ever heard of. It's someone that isn't in um, a particularly sort of fanciful league that people talk about too much over here um, you know and it, it just it just sort of came out of the blue you know I, I, I know literally what you've what you've said about him is, is everything I know about him um, but that's not a bad thing um, sometimes that's a very good thing so you know we will see when the season progresses and, and, and obviously as the, as the off season progresses and, and the more players they get signed we'll We'll see what sort of makeup this 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 clan team's going to be as they go into their new era. Probably, perhaps one of the biggest surprises of the off season so far is that 811 game NHLer Dmitry Kristich has become the head coach of the Edinburgh Capitals. Paul, your your second uh, the hockey writers article was about all this, so I'll come to you. And things seem to be looking up a bit in Murrayfield. Well, yeah. Uh, and you know, Andy was just talking there about um, the signing of John Tripp being a surprise. Um, I don't think anybody. I'm not even sure Scott Neal saw this one coming. <laughs> um, you know, not not only have they signed Christich, I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, um, he's got Darius Kasparaitis and Alex Nikolishin. Um, as his scout, they've, they've signed a 
deal with uh, Akbar's Kazan, uh, their, their academy to run training camps for local, you know, kids and and beyond. So they're they're, they're really and they've got and the ring's got a new Zamboni apparently. Um, so yeah, you know, they're, they're they're really building something you know ab- above and beyond um, anything that's you know. <laughs> Edinburgh's seen for a while. Uh, I mean, and you know, the, his his first signing, bringing Vorobiev back, um, who, who, top scorer who, who last a, year, who had a very interesting interview with the hockey writers himself. Um, indeed, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, we, yeah. It's not very good here. There's all these things wrong with it, and all this, that, and the other. But so, why did you sign again? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe there weren't many. Um, other offers, but or, or maybe there's just something about you know the, the club that he likes. But I mean, maybe you know this this magic money tree that Theresa May keeps telling people doesn't exist. Perhaps it's out the back of Morryfield, and <laughs> she just doesn't know where it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the, the <laughs> yeah, no politics on this show, please. <laughs> That was politics. <laughs> but I, I must admit that v- Vabariev coming back, it was interesting seeing that interview where he, he says he's on £500 a week. I mean, that's a bargain for a player of that calibre. Yeah. I mean, we, it it does throw into stark relief. Um, when, when you look at, you know, the, that have you seen that new website, that jobs.eliteprospects.com? Yeah. And you look at some of those figures and you sit and say, yeah, that's probably the Panthers, that's probably Sheffield or whatever. Look at the, some of the numbers they're throwing about. If, if, and who knows if he was telling the truth or not, Vorobayev is, well, you know, was on 500 quid a week, um, then, yeah, it throws, you say, it throws into stark relief some of the performances that we saw pound for pound uh, last season. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, Sheffield have almost completed their roster. I mean, Andy, what what do you think of it? I think it will be uh, very much the same as it always is. I, I think I mentioned on on the last podcast that we did when we were talking about you know um, the, the upcoming season. I think they could sign a a bunch of uh, wreck guys and they'd still be there or thereabouts because it's what they do. Um, as, as Panthers fans, it's annoying as hell. Um, but they always are and they, all, they always seem to be. So I don't expect them to be any different this season. I think they've upgraded in a, in a couple of areas. I think they've downgraded in a couple of others. Um, and obviously the ones that they've re-signed, you know what to expect from them. Um I am a little bit surprised at how many they've re-signed. I don't necessarily think the ones that they have are particularly, you know, poor or, or you know, players that you sort of think, oh god, he was terrible. Why have they had him? But I, I, you know, I just think that, you know, they were off the pace last season by, you know, a fair margin, not miles away like we were, but you know, they were off the pace, and I just think that. Um, there might have been a few more um, new faces in that team to try and freshen it up a little bit. Um, but you know they've still got some incredibly good players. They've still got um, you know a fair few players that annoy the hell out of me um, because they play for them and they're very good. Um, you know, so like I say, they'll be there or thereabouts because they always are. And um, you know, I'm, I'm sure. But uh, we'll see many a uh, overhyped game um, <laughs> against them this this coming season. Well, they've got twelve chances to uh, <laughs> at least to sell it to us. So there you go. Uh, final bit of news, and that came out today. Blaze have signed netminder Kevin Nasiuk from Dresner Ice Loan in DL two. Very, very good stats from what I've seen on Elite Prospects, but has only played thirty seven games in the last two seasons. So and. You know, will it be all his fault? <laughs> um, well, regardless, that you know that chance going to come out at a, a Panthers Blaze game. It's one of the things that it's, it's been going on now since the uh, Hirsch days. Um, 
Yeah, stats wise, he looks he, he looks decent. Um, I know there was the huge rumours that it was going to be Weakman. Um, I can still see Weakman ended up in another elite league team, but um, yeah, it look, looks good. Um, like you've mentioned, he not played a lot of games. Re- you know, does that mean he was the backup? Um, I, I I don't know. Was he injured? Uh, like I say, I don't know. So, have they signed their number two yet? Uh, who Blaze? Uh, Blaze. No, yeah. I don't believe they have. So it'll be interesting to see who they sign at a number two, and if they go down the maybe the two import goalie route like like we have, because um, obviously he's going to be coming in not expecting, you know, he's not had that forty, fifty, sixty game season since what five years ago I think I remember seeing on Elite Prospects. Um, so yeah, yeah, wait and see, but uh, that's looked promising enough. Yeah, yeah looking at this, um, he was like well. I don't know if he was the number one, but he played most games. Um, they also had somebody called Hannibal Wietzman, who played uh, 19. And the unfortunately named Rene Sweat, who um, who played 10. So it sounds like they shared their... The shared the workload then, doesn't it? So it'll be interesting yeah. to see how he um how he how he takes to playing, you know, like say forty, fifty games again. Um yeah. or you know, we'll see. Well that's um, the thing. I, I mean hope, I just I just hope we stick several goals past him. <laughs> <laughs> well we, we we don't get many chances to play commentary sadly yeah. uh, next season. So uh hmm. Okay, well I think that wraps it up for another off season edition. So all that's left to say is thank you very, very much to Antoine Marijon. That's not a problem. I'll talk to you soon. Andy Haywood. Any sorry. And Paul Barn. No problem. And thank you very much to you for listening. We will be back in a month or so's time with all the news that comes out of the Panthers. But until then, thank you very much and we'll speak to you again soon.